Come, little darling, we say bye-bye to Daddy. That's oh, a big kiss for your father. Why, see tears? Be a good boy, eh? Think you'll be late? No, I don't think so. That's good. Now you stay here for just a minute while Mommy waves goodbye to Daddy. I should be back before dark. Come on. Ah. Amigos. a hell of a way to make a living. <laughs> uh, what the hell are we gonna do anyway? The way I see it, it's kind of an insult to our profession, all that work for a measly few dollars. See, we still got five more of these left. We have the most important to get. Yeah, we'll have all the big boys then. You always do see the bright side of things. <laughs> That's the way I like to hear you talk. Are you there, there? Sure, like in El Paso? Like in El Paso.
What's your pleasure, mister? Whiskey. Right away. Excuse me, there's no time for proper introductions. Well, you might at least close the window. I don't want to get pneumonia. Hey! $15,000 reward for the killer of the Clayton family. $15,000. What are you stopping for, Johnny? We got work to do. What if you had to divide $15,000 50-50, Fred? You'd get a whole lot richer. What the hell are you thinking about? You'll know soon enough. Keep going. Go on. right there. They got a rope waiting for you. Inside, you dirty killer. Here you are, Sheriff. The killer of the Claytons. He's already confessed everything. Ah. That's very interesting. Just interesting? Got to keep a sharp eye on him, Sheriff. He's dangerous. Tried two times to kill me. I'd but say I... you're a very brave gent. And there's a reward, too. Over there. I wasn't thinking of a reward when I captured this bandit. Uh... By the way, who pays me? You or do I... Well, don't worry, you'll be paid. But first, take a peek out that window. Hmm? You don't mean that... Exactly. Go? You guessed it. They killed the Claytons. They and you happen to arrive on the day of execution. All right. Great time. Hand me your gun. Oh, it was just a little joke, Sheriff. I mean... I said hand over your gun. <laughs> so, it was only a joke, huh? It just so happens that a few members of that bunch are still at large, and for all I know... Well, we never had nothing to do with the Clayton. Frank, you tell them. <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? <laughs> Where's the sense of humor, Johnny? You look worried, kid. Hey, Sheriff, it was a joke, really. Now tell it to those three outside. If they laugh, you're free. I must compliment you. Your idea was brilliant. If you didn't like it, you should have said something before. Oh, be quiet and untie me. Hello, Bob. Howdy, Rogers. I'd like to see those... Right over here. Yes, sir. 
I hope you don't feel too badly about the execution of those three strangers. No, not too. Look at this. I'd be willing to wager a lot of money. Old Clayton would think it was his. <laughs> Good work. You have a gift for forgery, Sheriff. Well, we're ready to call on Harrison. Now don't talk so loud. Got a couple of prisoners in there. Before we take care of Mr. Harrison, let's make sure that we're clear in the same way. Let the town cool off. I'm inclined to agree with you. What we need is... Whose gun is this? One of the prisoners. Which one of you two owns this gun? Which one? It's mine. Why? And where did you get it? You're asking a lot of questions for a man I don't know. Why don't you mind your manners? You might introduce yourself first. Not a bit, stranger. My name is Steve Rogers. The pistol now, how did you come across it? Curiosity killed the cat. What do you want to know for? Uh, sort of personal. That revolver has a long story. Yeah. Well, you see, mister, it's like this. We just up and found it. I sure hope you're not lying to me. Oh, that's the truth. Right, Johnny? That's all. That's right, Fred. So your name's Johnny. Johnny what? Uh, Johnny is about all I recollect. <laughs> it's Murphy's. I've been afraid for many years that I'd have to pay for what I did, you know. Is it blackmail they're after? Or is it revenge? There's no reason to get upset. It's only a coincidence. They're just a couple of saddle trams who happened to find a gun. Young men? Just put those thoughts out of your mind. It's not your son. The only thing that's returned from the past, my dear, is that gun. I wonder. Now, I want you to forget about this pistol. All right, so it arrived here in Blackstone. Your boy was adopted years ago by the Murphys. They wouldn't tell him, I guess, as much out of fear as anything. They'd be afraid that I'd kill him the way you killed his father. I suppose you're right, but I still want them out of here. I'll tell Bob to let them go with orders not to come back. Now, don't worry. Hey! Come on, Fred, we're getting out. You're very lucky boys. But take my advice. Get out of town real fast. You hear what he said? Well, this time we're gonna listen. Yeah. <laughs> ah, we're gonna miss you boys. We're being deprived of your company, thanks to Mr. Rogers, a good Christian who interceded in your behalf. We'll give him our appreciation, huh? Yeah, sure. If I were you, I'd just leave. Fast as I could. Is it possible that we've made a real nasty impression on you? Huh. Just get on your way, boys. We don't want no trouble here in this town. Fred, I don't think that the sheriff here likes us. Hey, Fred, how about if I buy you a drink over at the bar before we go after Anderson, All right? We'll have a hell of a time catching him. Next time I'll listen to one of your fool ideas. Oh, hell, Fred. This is the first time that a plan of mine went so wrong. I mean, you gotta admit that most of the time my ideas work like a child. Come on, let's get that drink. Then we'll see if we can get a deal, boy. <laughs> What's the matter? It's Anderson. Like Abilene? Like Abilene.
Greetings, friends. I'm buying drinks for the house. Hold it. It's a sad mistake to reach for your gun and be forced to kill you. And what's all this? First of all, I want to know where Logan is. I'd say you're making a mistake. You don't say. Looks like one of us slipped up. Gee, Fred, I, I, I was sure it was him. I'll bet you're right, Johnny. Oh, yeah. You're the one that's mistaken, you know, mister. Now, where is Logan? I don't know. He's, he's headed south. We split up in Lexington. You... <laughs> Shoot. You believe that story about Nixon? Now, what do you think? Well, then, we'll have to refresh his memory. You gotta believe it. It's the truth. <laughs> well, you want us to go on with this? You're gonna bleed. <laughs> All right. Where is he? I don't know. He's gone, I tell you. Well, the two jokers are still here. Uh -uh. This time it's no joke, Sheriff. Now, I'm sure that you will agree that the person in this room here and the person on this poster are one and the same. Unless they're twin brothers, that is. Hmm? It's Anderson, all right. Hey, Sheriff. What about that reward, huh? If you don't mind waiting. No trouble at all. We'll wait. But this means we stay in town. You behave here. You give me no trouble, I'll see you get paid. We sure need that money. Be seeing you. All right, you stupid jackass. You haven't got the sense you were born with. Get in there. I was just thirsty. You are the cell. I have to treat you like a prisoner. They ask you any questions? They asked me where Logan was. I had to tell them or they'd have killed me. What do we do? I'd better be on my way to warn Logan. As for you, rest your heels and see if you can stay out of trouble. Anderson should have been back by now. We can't wait for him. We got a job to do. You gotta admit you were warned, Harrison.
Couldn't have been robbery. Well, I suppose that we ought to report this find to the sheriff's office, but I sure don't want to. Why don't we go after them killers? There'll be time for that. Our Christian obligation is to bring those stiffs in. Outside, Sheriff. A whole family murdered. The Harrisons, all dead. Just what do you two know about these murders? We heard guns being fired and rode like hell, but arrived too late to do anything about it, Sheriff. But I remember their faces. We were following a hired gun by the name of Jack Logan. Anderson can tell you who the rest of them are. I bet. I'm sure I'm much obliged. Your permission. Those there in the carriage, they passed on. Well, now, what do you think? They sure ain't taking a siesta. Were, were you the murderers? Uh, no, we didn't kill those. Oh, it's not important. I say, live and I'll live. Uh, by way of introduction, Jonathan Reishopper. Oh, I know it's a terrible tragedy. Terrible tragedy. But I must know who's paying for him. Take the bodies and get out of here. Of course, gentlemen. Good day. Come on, let's talk to the prisoner. Have you heard what happened, Anderson, huh? They say you know who the killers are. Yeah, that's what they say. I'd like to see him try and prove it. Give me just a few seconds with this animal and I'll make him talk. That'll be enough, I'm still sheriff. If you want my opinion, sheriff, we ought to ride out to Pearson's place. That's where they're hiding. A better idea is I'll go while you two stay here as my guests. What's that for? Why? What do we do? I consider it a practical thing to keep you here in custody as material witnesses. Keep an eye on them. Smart, Alex. So, my ideas are bad, eh? Your ideas are much better. Great. Pearson, it's the boss. You gotta get out of here right away. Oh, yeah? What are you telling us? Just what I said, do you hear? Two bounty hunters just caught Anderson. They also saw you kill the Harrisons and they know where you are. Do you say there were two? Yeah. Uh, you can bet it's the same two gunned down six of my men. You wouldn't mind if we took care of those coyotes before we got out of here. There's no time for that. Now, here's the plan. The mine is your new headquarters. You'll move there tonight. Aren't you forgetting Anderson? He's all right where he is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? <laughs> I was just thinking about if we had arrived two days earlier, we'd be hanging there in place of them, you can bet your boots. <laughs> Funny, huh? That's no joke. <laughs> and you know something? I bet they were innocent too. Yeah, like us. You know what they did? They tried to collect a reward in a Clayton's. <laughs> <laughs> but what they didn't figure on was their reward was going to be eternal. <laughs> I've uh, bad news for you, my slick friends. I went to the cabin and found nothing. 
Well, what's that have to do with bad news for us? Since you're the ones that brought in the bodies, you're the only real suspects we have. Just a minute, Sheriff. Now, you know as well as I do that we had nothing to do with that killing. And that you'd have a tough time trying to bring charges against us. Now, you know that. So why are you holding us here? I bet you can't give us a reason. I won't. Look, those two are innocent. Aside from the fact we haven't got an ounce of evidence on them, they didn't have no motive to do it. You're right. And here's the reward money for the capture of Anderson. And you can thank Mr. Rogers for this. He advanced the cash. Is there anything else, Sheriff? Yeah. I want you to hang around here for a few days in case I have to talk to you again. We'll be here. <laughs> Tell me, what do you think about that chair, Fred? Referring to what? I find it hard to believe you found nobody at the Pearson place. That's one thing. And there's someone else behind these killings. I'd bet on it. The butler? <laughs> no, it's De Niro. Lots of it. You don't kill people for nothing. Sir, good evening. I'm waiting. As soon as we can, Undertaker. We promise to send you some customers. All right. <laughs> Look at there, Fred. The Harrisons are dead and town life still goes on, just like before, hmm? as if nothing at all happened. <laughs> hey, Fred, this is Mr. Rogers. Morning, Mr. Rogers. Hello, boys. Morning to you. We're really obliged to you for the money. It sure came in handy. It wasn't anything. Ah, it was. It was very important. Do please call on me for anything you boys will need. We could take you up Thank on you. it. Thank you. Very kind of you. <laughs> Good day. Tell me, did the young one have the gun? Yes, why? I thought so. I knew it somehow. The minute I saw him, I felt something strange. These sentiments of yours are absurd. Do you mean to imply that you could recognize your son after 20 years? All right, there's no sense in talking. I can't explain anything like that to you. You'd have to know how a woman feels. I see I won't be satisfied until I'm dead sure. I feared many things, but I never thought you'd admit to feeling remorse. You've been mistaken in your judgment of me. An impossible love for you made me a lowly killer. I was that kind of woman. But the pain of giving up a son is never gone. Steve, deep inside you must always have known that I never renounced my son. Look, I appreciate your feelings, but you're utterly wasting them on those two. They're just a couple of drifters. Bounty hunters who happen to find the gun, that's all. Now that they've got their money, they'll leave. You'll see. Tell you what I think. I don't want to leave here until we find Jack Logan. Since we got to stick around here anyway, Johnny, we might as well keep our eyes open. Besides that, I got a feeling there's a lot of money here. Why don't we go out to Pearson's place and have a look, see? Yeah, no sense to that. The sheriff's been there. He said he saw nothing. Or he told him to clear out of there. You think the sheriff really could have? I figure he knows more than he's letting on. Yeah, the sheriff. Why not? Sure. Why not? I'll go have a glass of beer while you do your shopping. Fred, will you look at that? What do you got to say about that lady, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, I guess. And you're just sitting here? Control yourself. You expect me to fall off the balcony? Well, then I'll go, boy. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I've never had anything to do with that kind of woman. It's not as if she was some bar girl. Look, you who are a lot older, I mean, you who have a lot more experience than me, how do I get to talk to her? Let's go speak up. Now, come on, Fred, I'm talking serious. I can't do that. What'd I do? All right, listen to me. Now, when you're out to conquer a girl, the first thing you have to do is you, you take off your hat and you bow low. That always gets them. I'll do it. You bet. Uh, yeah? Hat and no bow. Thanks, Fred, huh? Time that we united our forces to keep these damn murders from killing us all off, family by family. We must also ask ourselves what mysterious value our land has to these outlaws. Uh, what's the reason and who is it that's trying to intimidate us? You want us to take the law into our own hands? You're damn right I do. Somebody's got to protect us. Have you already forgotten what happened to the Claytons and the Harrisons? Of course not, Forrest. We've already talked to the sheriff. The sheriff, you say? You men really think your lives are safe in the hands of our sheriff, do you? I say the only way we can stop these murders is to join forces now, once and for all. I agree with you, mister. I witnessed the killing of the Harrisons. And there must be a reason why this land is worth so much. If you need a hand, you can depend on me. We're obliged for your offer. We could use a good gun. Might I buy you a drink? Whiskey. Two, huh? Yes, sir. The name's Dan. Fred Dunn. I'm Forrest. Your whiskey's gents. We'd better to call me Tom. Eh? There's my son and my daughter, Elizabeth and Daniel. Howdy. Howdy. Howdy, ma'am. Fred here knows about our troubles and has very kindly offered to help us out. Johnny, I want you to meet a friend. Coming. This gentleman is Mr. Forrest. I'll be glad to help too, Mr. Forrest. Howdy. A pleasure. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. I hope you come and see us one of these days. If you finish your shopping, we better be getting on. Daniel? Right, Paul. Elizabeth? <clears throat> we'll expect you at our house. Been a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Forrest. Mind you keep your eyes open. Always. <sighs> Get up there. Don't forget, boys, our place ain't too far from here. Ask anybody where we live. See ya. Gee, Fred, I sure owe you a lot. For if it hadn't been for you, well, thanks. My interest is strictly commercial. Johnny, if I'm not mistaken, Old Forrest is the next target for Jack Logan and his wild bunch. Ah. Uh, guess I must have forgotten for a minute how your mind works. It's our immediate business to find where the sheriff's real office is. Sheriff's office? Mm-hmm. There he goes. Let's follow. Hey, Pearson! 
What is it? The sheriff's coming. Sheriff is one of them. Well, the next thing is to dispose of the, of the question of the land. It's worth a lot. What do we do? There's uh, someone in Blackstone who's got all the information we could ever hope to need. I just figured out who it is. Judge Bright? Are you Judge Bright? Yes, what can I do for you? I've been told that you're the one honest lawman in this town. Is that right? Hmm? Yes, yeah, the bandits run it. Oh, well, why don't you do something about it? Corruption here is incredible. It's impossible to get anything on them. Bring me the proof and they'll all go to the gallows. I feel sure that the Harris and Clayton killings had to do with the land they owned. That's only theory, not proof. Wouldn't hold in a court of law. Now, if you don't mind. Well, uh, if it's uh, not the land, do you have any, uh, any theories of your own? No. My function to have theories. We can do nothing without proper evidence. Judge Bright, I appreciate your dilemma. If anyone should come to you inquiring about that land, would you let me know immediately? It's irregular, but all right, young man, I will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good day. I forgot what I was looking for. <laughs> I like it when you laugh. You should do it more often. <laughs> The responsibility of the ranch. And for murders of all those people, I've had very little time to be happy. But today, I feel good. Just riding like this gives me such a sense of tranquility. Only tranquil? <laughs> Your teeth. You know that? You know I like you. You know, this is the first time that, that someone else's happiness has, has made me happy. <laughs> Johnny. What do you want to do with your life? Well, for the moment, I just want to hang on to it. <laughs> You're awful. Now be serious. What is it you want to know? Just look at you. How long do you plan to go on living the way you do, risking your life all the time? No family, no home, or life of your own. Tell me. Well, you see, I never thought much about it, but when I met you, Elizabeth, I decided to change myself, if you want me to. Yes, I do, Johnny. Please do it. Hey, you too. Hey, Danny boy. The sun's high. It's past time for dinner. <gasps> you made me forget all about cooking dinner. So sure he did. Howdy, Mr. Forrest. Hey, how are you, Johnny? Join me in a little old drink? Never refused a snort in my life. You look happy. Well, so do you. Although your reasons and mine are the same, you know what I think, young man? I believe those bandits got scared and cleared out. No, no, Daniel, I'll do it. We have just so many plates. No, you go and sit down. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a man can do this work as well as any gal can. Hey, Daniel, you better be careful. Or you end up making some man a perfect wife. Go ahead. You can make fun of me. <laughs> but I bet you won't howl when you put some of my special stew in your mouth. You'll see. <laughs> hey, listen, let's have some fun with Dan now. What do you say? I'll start it, and you two just act along the way I do. Uh -huh. uh, tell me all about your morning ride. Fine. Best one we've had yet. Elizabeth was happy. Well, let's drink a toast to happy women. All right. Drink to that. Attention. Announcing the first meal I ever made in my whole life. I just know you're going to enjoy it, all of you. Oh, careful. Mmm. <laughs> what a wonderful smell. Ooh. I'm hiring him without Oh, me. boy. Well, it looks like this too is a great success, Dan. I don't want any more compliments. Just go ahead and help yourselves. Mm, yeah. Oh, it's wonderful, really. Mm. It 
very good. Yeah, um, uh, right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Fred? Oh, what do you want? You've done what the judge said. Oh, oh go boy. To sleep. I really had a great time today. Yes, sir. Next time you should come too. Where? <laughs> Out to the forest ranch. Yeah, boy. Uh, they're a real fine family. And they're always asking me, when is old Fred coming out? When are you coming out, Fred? Oh, why don't you let a man sleep? By the way, nothing new about Jack Logan. <laughs> Boy, if I ever had some day. I'm crazy about the forest. <laughs> we laughed and laughed till we thought our sides would... Fred? Fred! <laughs> What's wrong? What is it? Oh, you were sleeping. I was just wondering. You've had a lot more experience in these things. What happens when you're in love anyhow? Insomnia. And idiocy. <laughs> Good luck, Jim. City. I dodge city.
Bob, we got to get out of here. All our men are dead. Who did it? Do you know? Yeah, those two guns who brought in Anderson. They know all about us. Hmm. I represent the law here. How could they connect us? <laughs> that star ain't going to protect you. I'm telling those two know it all. Go back to the mine. I'll meet you up there later, after I have a talk with Steve Rogers. Recruit all the good men you need, and see you get back as soon as possible. The last news I heard, they were in Tucson. It's there you'll find them. In no time, our problem will be solved. You're positive that this Laster gang is the best solution? Uh, tell me, do you know how much is offered for the Lassiters? Yeah, many thousands. Hmm. Far too much to ignore for people engaged in the bounty killing business. And the desert is littered with the bodies of those who tried to collect it. I think this plan will whip those two. About my absence, it's going to look funny. What do you think I should do about that? I'll see to everything. Leave it to me. Should anyone ask where you went, I'll say you took Anderson to the state prison. They'll believe me naturally. Yeah, I got to say, your respectability sure does come in handy. And I better be on my way. Yeah. Don't forget to ask for Will and Greg Lasseter. Just leave it to me. Ha. Oh, I sure want to see the look on the sheriff's face when he finds out we know. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Rogers. Oh. What are you doing Hello, here? boys. Mr. Rogers? Well, where's the sheriff? He'll be back shortly. That prisoner Anderson, the sheriff thought he'd better take him back to the state prison for safekeeping. You got a very courageous sheriff. That was the job that got his deputy killed. You say he was murdered? Yeah. And the man who can tell you all about it is Jack Logan. Something that he got away, which is kind of bad, because he was the one we were interested in most. I tell you, it's incredible. Really, it is. Blackstone is becoming just like a battlefield. Once so calm and quiet, and now... What do you expect of a town where the sheriff, the representative of the law and order, is the head of a gang of bandits? You say nothing. Don't you believe what I said? I just can't imagine how it's possible, that's all. I believe that you're quite serious. I'm sure that without proof, you wouldn't make a statement like that. Boys, are you certain about this? Believe it, mister. Ever since the day you came to Blackstone, it's one surprise after another. Really? What other surprises have you had since we're here? It began with a revolver. And now, back to the pistol, huh? I'm real interested in why that pistol's so damn important. All right. What does it mean to me? It once belonged to a friend. Uh, many years ago, he vanished. Now his gun shows up here. But I don't suppose that means anything to you. Thought perhaps you'd met him and could give me news of him. That's all there is to it, as far as I'm concerned. Well, now, that's interesting, if that was the man who gave Johnny the gun. But you, you said you found that gun. Yeah? Is that what I said? You wouldn't listen to me in the first place, would you? Now you should have no doubt. All right, it's possible, but we still need real proof. What more proof do you need than that gun, anyhow? It's his, and the other one's a Murphy. Both of them know that we did it, Steve. Doesn't that mean anything to you? It means only that there's a problem, and problems can be solved. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to run, leaving behind everything it's taken me years to build up. What are you trying to say? It's plain enough, isn't it? You mustn't do it, Steve. I wouldn't be able to stand it. I swear to you, I wouldn't be able to stand it. 
You'll be all right. It's a bit late for those kind of feelings. You're wrong. I won't let you get away with it. He's worth more than money, Steve. Say you understand. If he were hurt, Steve, I'd die, I know. I'm afraid it's too late. This morning, I sent for the Lassiters. Friends, I've got important news for you. Gather around now and hear what i got to say. Now, I've talked to Judge Bright. In view of the fact that we're left temporarily without a sheriff, Judge Bright approves our plan for a temporary sheriff. And you'll agree we want the greatest there is. So I nominate Fred Danton. Well, now, thanks a lot, men, but that's, that's not the job for me. Come on up here. I want to say that I approve their choice. Bob Gunn, the deputy dead, it's unfair to leave our people unprotected. I hope you'll take the job. You have my vote. Mayor Bullitt always hit the target. Even if I have to underwrite the undertaking. Never thought I'd see you give funerals away. Hey, this may be the cheapest time to die. I've been feeling cut poorly. <laughs> I don't know. That's up to uh, Come him. on now. Come on. What about it? All right. I accept. <clears throat> I'll do it now and quickly. Under the powers vested in me by the great state of Arizona and in the name of the good citizens of Blackstone, all assembled here for the post under discussion, Sheriff and Deputy Sheriff of Blackstone, you're hereby appointed. You will put your right hand on this sacred Bible and swear to defend and uphold the sovereign laws of this township in the state of Arizona. I swear. I figured out a way to thank these two fine boys. The best way to show my appreciation. I offer complete service, including two caskets, no charge in case you get yourself killed. Damn buzzard. You swear. I swear. My compliments. Here's your badge. You're now acting sheriff. And we all hope that in the performance of your duty, it won't be necessary to use your gun. Don't say that, Judge. Otherwise, how can I make ends meet? Damn buzzard. All right, gentlemen, let's have a toast to our representatives of the law. I'm proud of you. It must feel good to be so important to the others. Uh, it's more important to me that it be important to you. Judge, would you mind holding this for me? To Fred and Johnny. We finally have two men of honor representing the law in Blackstone. Too bad. Domestically speaking, the most important purveyors of the trade. You're a damn buzzer. You know what I think, Undertaker? You're a bloodthirsty idiot. That's right, a buzzer. Now I'll tell you something else if you're interested. I enjoy my work. Good luck. Here. I've been thinking about it all right. And I know where you can buy a little spray. Well, you and I got some business to settle first. Do you, uh, love me? You know I do. I believe in you, Johnny. You know that. I've been wanting you ever since I first saw you in the village. Let's see. That makes it how long? Twenty-two days, eight hours, and three minutes. <laughs> Logan. Mighty glad to see you, Bob. You mean this is the place? Well, it won't do for the Lassiter gang, Sheriff. I'm headed to town. You know you're taking orders from Steve Rogers. If you were seen in town, it would ruin this plan completely. I'll go in myself. I'm thirsty and could use a couple of drinks. And maybe bring some back to some of the boys out here. Might even run into the bounty killer. Not so fast, William. I don't want you going in without me. They killed Cal Lemon. He was a friend of mine. Oh, boys, I'm I glad to see you. 
The last couple of weeks in a mine alone, I even begin to appreciate the company of dead prospectors. What's the last you heard? What's been going on in town? Are they still there? Not only are they there, but those two bounty killers have been appointed acting sheriff and deputy. The whole town's in support of them. Yeah, when we get through with them townspeople, they won't give you any more trouble. William, it's better if I go into town. I know Rogers better than you do. You needn't worry, Sheriff. After you get that paper signed, you will eliminate the only witness. And the bounty killers? Once you've got the deed to Forrest's property, then I want you to take care of those young men. How you do it is up to you. Just so you understand that the main thing, the only thing, is that the bounty killers are wiped out. And afterwards? For now, it's enough, I think. The townspeople. It depends on how they take it. They'll fall in line. And it's of great importance that there's not the slightest hint you work for me. Are you clear? You mean I brought the whole gang with me just for this? Don't worry about that. That's my concern. I'll see that you're well taken care of. Okay, when do we start? I admire a businessman. You start and finish tomorrow. Mark. Yes, ma'am. If anyone asks me, I'll be back in about an hour. Yes, ma'am. I never would have believed that a sheriff had to work so hard. Well, you know, you never get nothing for nothing. Besides, it's about time you started earning an honest dollar. I don't intend to take insults from a deputy. If you can't show your sheriff the respect, that... see who it is. You must get out of here, both of you. You must leave here right away, otherwise something terrible will happen to you. Why? I know what I'm saying. They're going to kill you and your friend, Fred. You must leave in tonight. But I, I... I'm imploring you. Don't make the mistake of staying here, if you want to go and live in Does your husband know about this? What difference does it make? My words are from my heart. You've got to go. Fred, guess who came to have a chat with me? Oh. Mrs. Rogers. Oh? What amazed me was the way she kept looking at me when she talked. Like I was someone very important to her. <laughs> You're doing pretty good, ain't you? <laughs> Come on, be serious, will you? Uh... All right, what'd she have to say? Well, she said that we should uh, get out of here as fast as we can, and that our lives are in danger. Seems that someone here in Blackstone is out to get us. Anyway, that's what she says. What do you think? I don't know. I just know one thing, boy. Whenever there's a pile of money around, there's always a little danger that goes along with it. <laughs> when you talk like that, you talk like my kind of man. Yeah, you sure do. Rogers. Well, let's see now. There's Rogers and then uh, that. Uh, hey, what are you mumbling about? Huh? <laughs> Oh, nothing. I was just mulling things over. Huh. I'm going to get some air. Okay. That was 20 years ago. There were absolutely no clues as to the identity of the assassin. And there was a son. But I don't know what happened to him. After a few months had passed, she and Steve Rogers, an old friend, well, they were married. And I must say, between them, they'd done very well. You mean to say that boy just disappeared off the face of the earth and not one person... Ask his mother any questions. Oh, I know how strange that might seem to you, but the lady suffered so much, and we all just took for granted that uh, Steve Rogers didn't want any children. 
I see. Especially children that were not his. <laughs> hey, Sheriff, when do you think you'll get around to sending me a few clients, huh? Huh? Who's that, Bob? No. We'll be here in a minute. And we'll see. On your way, mister. You're on my land. And when I want to talk business, I'll invite you. Miss Lazarus, you know her reputation, don't you? Yeah, of course I know you. Oh, well, we just want to discuss a little business. Just what kind of business? <laughs> I demand to know. <laughs> just sign this paper. You don't really expect me to sign this. I've made it clear I've worked this ranch all my life. And I don't intend to sell out. Money. All this is yours, Forrest. When you sign the paper. No deal. We don't want your money. Go on, beat it. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't, they'll murder us. Don't push them into that. Listen to her, Forrest. We're running out of patience. Tell who the buyer is. I don't find his name on that paper. Just a simple precaution. Don't matter nothing anyhow. It matters a lot. Because I ain't signing nothing or ride out of here. You want to bet you will? I won't sign. Okay, Forrest. We'll see. Over there. Let my son go, Lassiter. Now he'll go, all right.
Hey, what? The Lassiter. The Lassiter. Have you here? The Lassiter. Yuma. Yeah, Yuma. When? When we get opposite of that there barrel. chance of defending yourself. Give me a chance, will you? You're two against one. I'll do it, Johnny. Leave him to me, Fred. I believe the deputy has to obey the sheriff. Well, Gregory, anytime you're ready. What are you waiting for? Interruption. Go ahead. You're looking scared. You nervous? They ought to be back. I'm getting a little concerned about them. I wouldn't worry about them. Not them Lasseter brothers. I bet they stopped in for a couple of beers after the shooting. I hope you're right, but I'm still worried. If the Lasseter should fail, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, what on earth does it mean if they fail? You have land enough and money, too. If you want my opinion, you send the Lassiters back to Tucson. I didn't ask for your opinion. Why can't things be the way they were for all those years? We used to be so happy together. For me, you were the only man. Oh, I'm begging you, Steve, let it go. And your son, have you thought of that? He's come here to avenge at last what we did to his father. It's either his life or it's ours. Please let him live, Steve. 
we could escape here and begin a new life together. Where are you going? I intend to make sure he's dead. No one's going to stop me. That includes you. Right, good day, Judge. You seem very much engrossed in that newspaper, I must say. Yeah, the news is extremely interesting. For example, the contract given to the Southern Company for the construction of a railroad passing through Blackstone. It seems very strange to me that we're just hearing of it. I agree. That certainly is an interesting development. Of course, we do always get the news rather late here in Blackstone. Here, have a seat. No, but I would appreciate some information. That is, has there been any questions asked lately about land registration? Oh, yes, the new sheriff. I wonder why. Huh. It's Steve Rogers, and he's looking worried. What went wrong? There's bad news in Blackstone. The Lassiters are dead to a man. Gunned down by those two bounty killers. You rest easy, and I promise to put the two of them in a cemetery. I have faith in you, Logan, but we'll move at the proper time. You'll be getting your chance soon. Now listen, Bob. Yeah? I'm almost sure that the youngest one of those two is the son of Alan Reed. That's not possible. Can't be that kid. Hmm. It's only possible. It's his son, without a doubt. What do you intend to do, Rogers? <laughs> I got a plan. But I'm going to need you to help me carry it out. You hear? What are you doing? You swore 20 years ago that you'd never again touch a gun. You promised me. And you know I meant it. I have no intention of dying. I've got to defend myself. I don't want you to go, Steve. I mean that. What can you do alone against two professional killers? No more than I could. You don't make sense. You'll soon learn that. That means you're not going to be alone. How many of you? You're asking too many questions. I've got a right to know. I have to do this thing my way. You and those filthy Lassiters. Just listen to me now, Steve. I won't let you hurt that kid. Fred! Fred! Howdy. Fred! You gotta help me find him. You gotta help me find him and kill him. Hey, you been drinking or something? They killed Betty Forrest. And the old man. All of them murdered. There they were, lying there in the bloody dirt. I almost lost my wits. I buried him. Elizabeth was last. Listen to me. I know how you felt about Elizabeth. And when I realized it was Elizabeth, I just felt I was lost. It was like seeing her for the first time at death. 
had a real meaning. Johnny, any idea who might have done it? No, I don't know yet. But when I find him, I'll kill him, Johnny. you hear me? I'll kill the dirty bastards. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get him and I'll kill him! Yeah, Johnny, I'll get kill him! I'll Stop kill it, him. Johnny! Stop it! What are you all gonna do? We ain't gonna shoot you for a while, because we need you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sam. Keep shooting. You come with me. I don't understand anything anymore. You? I think so. Yes, sir, I believe I do. <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? <laughs> I do believe that we have witnessed the case of real poetic justice, Johnny. <laughs> Not nobody. <laughs> now, if you can pull yourself together, would you mind telling me why that woman up there shot her husband? It's very funny. You know that pistol that we found by the side of some road? It brought back memories to Mrs. Rogers and prepared the fate of Mr. Rogers. <laughs> So she killed him. It was for you, Johnny. You see, she had a feeling that you were her son. I'm her son. That's right. Oh, well, hell, we can't have her going around believing that. What she believes don't count. We're alive, boy, and that's what counts. Yeah, both of us. <laughs> we ought to get a move on. <laughs> Life goes on. Like Wyoming? All right. They're looking for me there. I am. In Colorado. <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> yeah. 